For most of the time that I've been alive, Jaguar didn't make a sports car. Sure, they had the XK, but it was really more of a grand tour. I had heard tales of how great the E-Type was, but by the time I was born, it had already been gone for decades. Then everything changed in 2013 when Jaguar finally launched its successor the F-Type. Now, the F-Type has been around with us for nearly a decade now, in fact, just a little bit over a decade. It hasn't really changed all of that much. It's still on the same platform, although it did receive a major facelift for the 2021 model year. But sadly, after a decade on sale, Jaguar is finally retiring the F-Type with no confirmed successor. This is actually kind of a bittersweet moment for me because this is actually the first time that I have ever gotten to drive an F-Type in the 10 years that it has been on sale, and sadly, it will probably be my last. In this review, we're going to look at the final model year, the 2024 Jaguar F-Type in its base R dynamic form as a convertible, and we're going to determine whether or not this is still a sports car that you should buy in 2024, and look at the legacy of this car, and how sports cars are going to be much different after this car is gone. So we're gonna start with an exterior walk around of the 2024 F-Type. As I mentioned, this car did get a facelift for the 2021 model year. You've got this new front end with the kind of more corporate headlights. If I'm being honest, I actually preferred how the F-Type looked before, but this is definitely not a bad looking car. I think it is really gorgeous. The white wasn't really my favorite when they dropped it off. I was hoping for a red or an orange or some kind of color like that, but it is a very elegant color finished uh, in this white. I do think it looks really nice. We have the R Dynamic, which is actually the base trim level here, but they are all V8s for 2024. Now for 2024, every F-Type is gonna have this black package. So we've got this black grill, black Jaguar logo. It does say F-Type lower down in that grill. All of the accents are black, which is kind of cool as well. We are riding on these 20 inch wheels. Every F-Type is gonna have 20 inch wheels, but there are a couple of different spoke patterns that you can choose from. This one actually happens to be my favorite one. We do have red brake calipers as part of an option as well. You can still get the F-Type as either a coupe or a convertible. The convertible model comes with a couple of different roof colors. We happen to have a black roof, but you can also get red and like a tan roof as well. I Kind of just depends on what color you get, um, but the red roof actually would look really great, I think, with uh, this white ex ex uh, exterior. The back end really looks the same as the F-Type when it debuted. The front end is really what they changed with that facelift. This rear end looks the same, which is fine by me. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. I think the coupe looks great as well, but I gotta just lean a little bit towards the convertible. I know the coupe kind of has that shooting brake thing going on, but with the roof down, you will be able to hear these amazing quad exhaust tips just a little bit better. So that would be one major reason why I would maybe want to opt for the convertible. We do have a very uh, sleek back end here. No spoilers, although this is a pop-up spoiler. We don't have any fixed uh, spoilers here. You can push a button and lift that up, which does look really cool. Now moving here on the inside, we've got these pop-out door handles that work quite well. We've got some optional sport seats. There's actually like three different seats that you can get here. I think these are the best ones. They hold you in really well. They look gorgeous. They're very similar to the ones that you get in the F-Pace SVR. I love how they say Jaguar here with this really nice texturing. And they have the leaping Jaguar here on the headrests. They have perforation here in the middle because these are actually heated and ventilated. That is an option here on the Space R Dynamic Trim, but it is really nice that you get a sport seat that is still heated and ventilated. Now, the F-Type is sadly showing some signs of age, but I'm gonna show you why I really don't think that is too much of a problem. When we go ahead and start it up, Jaguar was really big on these like moving air vents way back when, so when you start it up, the air vents in the center are going to rise up. It's pretty dramatic, but I could definitely see that breaking in a couple of years. We do have a nicely sized digital gauge cluster. The gauges look fine. It's about 12.3 inch gauge cluster. And we do have this 10 inch touchscreen that is a very matte finished, as you can maybe see. 
it, it's a little bit hard to read on the camera here because of that matte finish. I actually kind of liked it because um, I thought it would get rid of glare sort of, uh, but it, when the roof is down, it's really not all that great, which is why I'm probably gonna go ahead and put the roof back up. I can just hold it and we can watch that roof go up fairly easily. See, now you're gonna be able to much easier see this screen. It definitely looks its age. As I said, this is not like the newest infotainment system that Jaguar and Land Rover have. Um, you can set the wallpapers. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so that's really all I need. This is going to be your most important setting here. You can customize your dynamic mode here. Super easy to put it in and out of its sport mode. You have like a wet weather mode that you can activate by pushing this little switch forward. You can go back into normal mode and then go down. You'll see the little flag glow red, letting you know that you are in the dynamic mode. You can set up the engine, gear shift, steering, and suspension. I like to have all of it in dynamic, but the suspension I like to keep in comfort mode because I think this car really ranges from firm to outright back braking. So I would rather just leave it there, but I really don't have too much problems with the screen. It's a decent size, pretty legible unless there's a lot of sun, Apple CarPlay, all good. Buttons on the steering wheel, super easy. Knobs and buttons down here. Fan speed up, fan speed down. Temperature up, temperature down. Want to turn on your heated seat? Click this button. Heated seat, ventilated seat. So easy. Doesn't need to be any more complicated than this. I've been in so many sports cars that make this difficult. So many luxury cars make this difficult. Touch screen controls, different menus to activate that. No, I just want buttons and knobs, just like how the F-Type does it. I think Jaguar honestly got it perfect here. Just the right number of buttons. The only thing I would say it's missing is a tuning knob, but convertible control right here. Start, stop, defeat, you need that. The stop, start really sucks on this car. Pop-up spoiler right here, traction control off, quiet exhaust, loud exhaust. This is as simple as it needs to be. My seat controls right here. Nothing is more complicated than it needs to be. And honestly, I kind of hate that sports cars are gonna be a lot more complicated than this in the future. In terms of practicality, we've got our glove box here. It has this really cool Jaguar established in 1935 logo right here. It actually feels super nice to push that button. It makes like a really nice uh, click as it opens up the glove box. We've got small little pockets there in each doors. We've got two cup holders here with this little folding cover, little storage here where our USBs are. And then I do have a little bit of net back here to hold like a phone or something like that. Definitely not the most practical sports car, but I think you can get away with it just okay. In terms of the trunk space, Maybe one reason why you'd want to get the coupe is how much you can fit in it. We only get about 7.3 cubic feet of space back here. You can tell it's definitely not all that big. It does go deep a little bit, but it is kind of a weird cutout down here. And even though it does go in a little bit this way, you aren't going to fit much in there. The F-Type coupe with its kind of hatchback uh, in the back is going to have a little over 14 cubic feet of space. So nearly double or actually a little bit more than double what you're going to get here on the convertible. So just something to consider if you're cross shopping the two body styles. Putting the roof down is super easy. You get a switch right here on the dash. It's going to go ahead and lower the windows. The roof goes down pretty darn quickly and you can do that while you're moving as well. But everything I've talked about so far is pretty much irrelevant because I'm sure you just wanna see me drive this beautiful British sports car with a V8 supercharged engine under the hood. I'm really gonna miss this engine. It's not gonna be around too much longer. I believe that the only cars that are gonna still offer it are gonna be this and the F-Pace SVR SUV. Land Rover is pretty much done using this engine. They're gonna switch to a twin turbocharged BMW motor. I love the backwards opening hood on this car and I absolutely adore this engine. All right, now let's get behind the wheel for the first time and sadly the last time of the 2024 Jaguar F-Type. I cannot believe that it has taken me this long to finally get to drive this car because I honestly didn't know what I was missing out on. I knew, you know, I had heard videos of how good this car sounded and I had watched reviews talking about how pure and good of a driving experience it was, but oh, ho, ho! you can't beat the real thing. Oh, ho! now in this final year of the F-Type, Jaguar has distilled it to its utter essence, 
no more V6, no more wimpy four cylinder, just a five liter V8 engine with a supercharger. And it sounds like that. Oh my God, those quad exhausts, incredible. Oh, wow. Now, believe it or not, the one we're driving is actually the base tune. 444 horsepower, 428 pound-feet of torque going out to the rear wheels only via an eight-speed automatic transmission. Zero to 60 takes around 4.4 seconds. That is what Jaguar calls the P450 tune. And believe it or not, this is actually less power than the F-Type S debuted with back in the 2014 model year. So this is the detuned version, but honestly, with rear wheel drive, I don't think I'd really want any more power than this. You can get the back to step out, but it doesn't feel that scary despite there being an absolute monster under the hood. I mean, yes, can you get this car loose? Absolutely. Is it the quickest sports car out there? No, but when you just hear that soundtrack all the time, you really don't care. You can also get this version of the V8 with all wheel drive if you get the 75 trim level of the F-Type, but I don't know. I don't know if I really would want the all wheel drive. I guess if you live somewhere where there's cold weather or a lot of rain and you wanna be able to drive your F-Type year round, that makes sense, but I don't know, the rear wheel drive is just so fun. If you want the most powerful F-Type that they're selling in this final model year, you do have to get all wheel drive though. The P575 engine tune produces 575 horsepower. I do like that Jaguar's names are actually simple and straightforward. You also get 516 pound-feet of torque. That's gonna drop the zero to 60 time significantly down from 4.4 seconds to about 3.5 seconds. But I don't know, it costs a lot extra and <laughs> this regular detuned V8 doesn't exactly feel slow. I think what I enjoy so much oh, about this F-Type, aside from the noise, is just that this is pure, unadulterated sports car enjoyment. We don't have all-wheel drive. We don't have rear-wheel steering. No electric motors. No turbocharging. Just a big supercharger. Rear-wheel drive and a big dumb idiot in the middle enjoying all of it. Oh my gosh. If I had to be somewhat critical of this car, and I guess I do, it's kind of my job. I would say the eight-speed automatic transmission, especially by 2024 standards, it's not that great. When you're at half throttle, there's definitely a delay on the upshifts. You can really feel the delay on the downshifts. You pull the paddle and there's that kind of, mm, okay, here's your gear. You don't get that from PDK. However, if you either put the gear lever into the S mode or you shift it manually at full throttle, you get a different result. Whoa! It just makes all the best noises, cracks like a whip on the upshifts. Could I live with this transmission? Absolutely. Is it the quickest? Nope, but oh my gosh. <laughs> and the steering, the steering is just so nice. You can control the front end so well. I know exactly what this car is doing. The back end talks to me, so I never feel like I'm scared of it just slipping out without me controlling it. God, just so much balance. The brake pedal has a nice feel to it. The suspension in its comfort setting still gives you just enough body roll to have fun. I don't need the dynamic setting beating me up all the time. Oh, I definitely enjoy the car a lot more manually shifting it myself. I will say that though. You know, this is kind of a bittersweet moment for me. I'm so glad that I finally got to enjoy the F-Type. I've lusted after this car for so long and I always wondered if it drove as good as it looks. And in my first experience, I can already say, absolutely it does. And 
I never got to experience the V6 and the four cylinder and the manual transmission one and all of the different variants that they made. So it's hard for me to speak from experience, but from this experience driving this detuned, but still amazing sounding V8 one with rear wheel drive and the automatic that it was always meant to come with. I really just feel sad that sports cars aren't going to be built like this anymore. Oh, they're going to be fast. They're going to be comfortable. They're going to be full of tech, but I don't know if they're going to make me feel that the way the F type makes me feel. Goodbye, kitty. I'm going to miss you. You played a great song. Sadly, that is going to wrap up my time with the 2024 Jaguar F-Type. Honestly, I don't want to hand back the keys. I wish I could keep this car forever. That's how nice it is. But sadly, our time is done with it. And Jaguar has already discontinued this car. If you can go buy one at a dealership, you really want one. I highly recommend you do it now before they are all gone forever. This R Dynamic model in the convertible body style is gonna set you back just under $80,000, 79,900 to, to be exact. If you want the coupe, you'll actually save $2,000. So keep that in mind. I'm giving you convertible pricing. Just take $2,000 off and you can get yourself a coupe. The 75 trim level, which pays homage to 75 years of Jaguar sports cars, including the E-Type, that's gonna get you some special accents. It's also gonna get you all wheel drive, but it is going to set you back almost $92,000. Honestly, unless you're just real into the heritage or like I mentioned during the driving portion, you live somewhere where it snows a lot, I would just stick with the R-Dynamic with the rear wheel drive. The all-wheel drive doesn't really get you any added performance. Then there's the R75. That's the most powerful trim level. Also all-wheel drive, gets you that more powerful V8, costs you $115,000 to start though. If I'm being honest, I don't think you're gonna need it. If you just wanna cruise, you get all of the noise, you get all of the same pleasure here on the R-Dynamic and you're going to be saving about $35,000. So I think I'd rather have that money in my pocket, rear wheel drive and still get to enjoy the same great engine. I really hope you've enjoyed this last look at the 2024 Jaguar F-Type. For more videos like it, be sure to ring that notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. Always subscribe to our channel and I'll see you next time.